Retro! What's up guys? You know, I get a lot of questions on my YouTube, on my Instagram, but the number one most asked question is about my diet and training. So I decided to make a video today dedicated to that very topic. Now, it's a little bit cumbersome because, well, it's fitness and fitness is kind of boring, but you guys asked, so I'm gonna give it to you. Here we go, live from my patio on a beautiful Florida evening. So first, let's start off talking about why I diet and why I train the way that I do. I train for three main reasons in the order of importance descending from most important to least important. First and foremost is health and longevity. When you have a kid, you realize that your squat max, your deadlift max, and how ripped your abs are, aren't necessarily the most important things in life. I went through a lot of injuries, powerlifting wrecked me, pro wrestling wrecked me, and I wanted to be able to play with my kid. So I had to change the way I trained because my knees hurt all the time, I had a hip surgery, I tore my shoulder, uh, uh, all sorts of stuff. I'm not gonna get into that right now, but the fact is, the way I was training was not sustainable for me. I wanted to be able to play with my kid and not have to worry about getting into a seated position without, uh, you know, being in pain. So I changed my way of training there, and we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, as far as longevity goes and health goes, cardiovascular health is much more important to me now than it was before. I want to live longer so I can be around my kid longer. It makes sense. It's sappy, but it's true, guys. I have much different priorities now that I'm 35 than I did when I was 25. Number two is going to be body composition. Look, I know I said I don't want ripped abs, but I also don't want to be fat. I like to be comfortable in my skin, you know? I don't need to be super lean, but I, I like to be between 12 and 15% body fat. I have some uh, upper ab visibility, you know, I have some vascularity, and uh, I fit into my medium shirts comfortably, which is what I like, and that's what's important to me. Number three, athletic performance. Like I said before, I've shifted my, my priorities away from uh, you know, max effort lifts, pure strength to endurance. Now I spend a lot more time on my bike and on my rower and breaking those PRs is more important to me than breaking my strength PRs. And frankly, I just can't break my lifting PRs anymore. My body just won't have it. So uh, my diet and my training facilitate my endurance uh, improvements and that's what I train for. Those are the PRs. I go for the, the 500 meter on the rower PR time or my, my, uh, my you know, mile bike time or things like that. That's what's important to me now. I'm all about making things simple and digestible, so I'm gonna break down my diet and training methodology into three pillars, okay? These are the main fundamentals that I live by. Eat real nutrient-dense food for the most part. I know this may be hard to believe, but I don't live off of Jolly Ranchers and potato chips, guys. I'm sorry, I would love to lie to you and tell you that I eat a bunch of junk all day and look pretty decent, but that's just not how I roll. I eat very bro, uh, grilled chicken breast, egg beaters, lots of vegetables and lots of fruit. I don't eat red meat very often. Uh, it's, I don't eat a lot of carbs, period. My wife and I, we have a subscription to Blue Apron and we just started HelloFresh, so that keeps our, our dinners with a lot of, we had a lot of variety going and you know, we can switch the carbs up, potatoes, rice, um, Korean rice cakes, some fancy stuff now and then, but uh, I do not eat as much junk as you might like to believe. When it comes to training, Bust your ass. I know this sounds cliche, but I have a high activity level. I do a lot of cardiovascular activity. I stay on my feet as much as I can. I am not a lazy guy. I love doing yard work. I love going out with my kid and doing things. I love walking places. Whenever I can, I try to. we try to do that. We try to walk places, and uh, I'm a very active guy, so that helps a lot. When you're in the gym, don't mail it in. You know, it's just about giving your all no matter what you're doing, whether it's your cardio, whether it's your training. Uh, I just really believe that busting your ass is the way to get the results that you want. And finally, I've gone over this before, but we're gonna go over it again. Pick your spots. Know when to splurge, know when to overeat. Notice I didn't say cheat. Know when to, you know, eat more than you normally would, like a holiday. I just ate a metric shit ton on Mother's Day. You know, I picked that spot. I don't do it every day. I don't do it every week. I may not even do it every month. But when the time calls, you wouldn't need to be able to relax and just and just eat more than you normally would. And that's important to pick your spots. Don't do it every weekend. 
know what I'm saying? Save it for the holidays, save it for the special occasions, save it for the times you can really eat good stuff. Pick your spots, make sure it counts. So here's my diet. It's pretty simple, but I'm gonna break it down for you piece by piece. First off, I do not count macros. I hate to break it to you guys, but uh, I counted macros for about six years. I can do it in my head, and uh, I, I just don't need to use an app to know how much I eat anymore. While I don't track macros, I can give you an, a kind of a rough outline uh, of my, my intake, and that's I eat a lower protein intake because I've read some stuff from Alex Viata where he prefers to emphasize carbohydrate intake over protein intake in terms of the number. So I eat about probably 150 grams of protein a day. I'm 180 pounds. I know that sounds like not a lot, but it's enough for me. Um, I guess I'd probably eat anywhere between 200 and 300 grams of carbs per day. It just depends on the day. I don't count, but that's what I imagine it would be. Some days, maybe, maybe less. It just depends on what I have to review that day. And the fat content, once again, just really depends if I'm eating like a frozen yogurt for dinner or if I review a lot of calorie dense things during the day. It just depends. Usually my day is uh, two whole meals and then two shakes per day plus fun size reviews. So I'm not eating a whole lot. I wish I could lie to you guys and tell you I have some crazy metabolism, but I just don't. I do a form of calorie cycling. I have three moderate intake days per week, two to three lower intake days per week, and then one day, sometimes two days where I increase my calorie intake. Not a lot, but just enough to kind of make me feel a little bit better. If I'm feeling run down, maybe I just need to relax. You know, I'll eat some more. And speaking of that higher calorie day, I usually use that day to get my drink on. And if you guys wanna watch my video about alcohol and fitness, feel free to. I go over all that stuff there, but trust me, Alcohol is not as evil as people make it out to be. That pizza though that you order when you're drunk, that's what'll get you. Now for my training, it's very simple. Once again, that's a running theme here, simple. I like to keep things simple. I use a body part split. It's bodybuilding centric uh, because that's what makes my joints feel best. I get a nice pump, I feel good, you know. Uh, I know I'm not building much muscle, if any, uh, just because I don't eat enough to facilitate that muscle growth and I'm natural but it makes me feel good, so that's the way I train. I train chest, shoulders, and triceps on Monday and Saturday. Wednesday, I train my legs. Really, because I bike so much now, I don't do much quad stuff. I usually do a lot of glute and hamstring things like single leg Romanian deadlifts or um, glute bridges. And uh, Friday, I do back and biceps. My back is just, you know, naturally one of my bigger body parts. And uh, I don't train my biceps that often because they just have outpaced my triceps so much that they don't really need that either. My rowing, I do a lot of rowing usually, so that's a, a good enough stimulus for me for my back to keep what I got. As far as cardio goes, I do it every single day. That's right, guys. Sorry, like I said, I'm focused on my endurance, you know, my cardiovascular health and my ability to go for a long time on a bike or on a rower or wherever I may be. Endurance is my main focus. So I spend anywhere between 45 minutes to sometimes up to three and a half hours of riding the bike. You know, I don't row, the, I don't row for that long, but when I go on the road, we go out on the track uh, and I need to do 30 or 40 miles, it takes me about three, three and a half hours. It's really nice, it's very therapeutic, but you know, if I'm in the garage, I'm a smart trainer uh, on the bike, I usually spend up to two hours, but that's not every day. Okay, guys, don't don't get it twisted. I'm not spending two hours every day. A lot of times, it's usually like a 45 minute to 55 minute workout, not even including the cool down and warm up. And then I uh, I get off the bike and I'm done for the day. Some days I spend some time out there and I bust I bust my damn ass. You've two hours and and change sometimes, but that's not a regular thing. Just like training, you don't max out every day, you know, or you shouldn't. Uh, I don't spend two and a half hours on the bike every day either. So. And that about sums it up. I hope I answered all of your guys' questions. Try to make this succinct and simple as possible. If you have any more questions, anything your your little mind can think up, please feel free to pick my brain, ask me what I do, hit me up in the comment section. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Until next time, stay strong. Let's go!